Hello friends, it's Jerry with Black Salt Audio and welcome back to another video. When I was in school for audio production, one of my instructors once said to us something that to this day I've never forgotten. And that was, remember, we're engineers, not engine eyes. And that always stuck with me. Basically his point was, instead of relying on fancy meters and the like, you should instead be making mixing moves based on what sounds best. And like with any and all mixing advice that I got in college, I took it to heart, which looking back now might have ended up being a little detrimental in the end, but that's a video for another day. And while I personally still believe that, for the most part, you should be making judgment calls on your mix based on the way that it sounds and not what it's telling you, is there a place for mixing with your eyes? I mean, quite frankly, it's pretty hard to avoid. There are so many plugins nowadays that have things like real-time analyzing, mix matching, auto mixing. It's like there's constantly a snake tempting me to eat the forbidden fruit. This is in no way me bashing any company that makes plugins like these. On the contrary, all of this technology and accomplishments and stuff should be celebrated, if anything. It's pretty crazy what you can do with them, and I use a ton of that stuff in my own workflow. Even with things unrelated to audio like AI-generated images, I can't help but to fear that engineers like us are going to be out of a job someday. Existentialism aside, let's go back to our question. Is it bad to mix with your eyes? Hmm, let's see, what are my answers? Hmm. Ooh, let's go with, it depends. Yep, I know, shocker. An ambiguous answer to a loaded question so I don't have to make a definitive statement on it. The classic YouTuber way. By the way, the support that we've gotten here on the YouTube channel has been amazing and we want to give back to you. Exclusive to our YouTube subscribers, there's a link in the description where you can get yourself 25% off BSA Clipper. All you have to do is input your name and your email address and you'll have instant access. Like I said before, I'm a big believer in using your ears for EQ moves and such. That's what works for me and I feel like it's made me a better mixer over the years. But if you want my honest takeaway from all of this, who the hell really cares at the end of it all? No, really, think about it. Do you think any normal person who's listening to a hit song on the radio or on streaming or something is thinking, wow, I really love this song. Hmm, I wonder if they track this in Pro Tools or in Cubase. Or, man, this is really bopping, but damn, they used Pro Q2 instead of an SSL channel clone? Hmm, that's not real mixing. No, of course not. No one is thinking any of these things, not your clients, not the people giving you sync deals. It's just us engineers fighting each other in a Facebook group, trying to one up each other on which philosophy is the best. I remember when I was getting started, I would watch countless videos on how to mix to try to find the right way to do things. And I would get frustrated seeing that every engineer had their own way of doing things. Even my own instructors in school would contradict each other. And I would throw my hands up and say, what is the right way? And that's just it. There is no one way to mix. And once I realized that, it all clicked for me. Mixing, at least for me, is all about honing in your skills and coming up with a workflow that works best for you. And going back to worrying about these fancy plugins taking the place of real engineers, I honestly think that we have nothing to fear. No amount of auto whatever is gonna replace the soul injected into a body of work from a talented engineer who was put in the time to develop their sound and what makes them unique. Take something like Oxygen from our own company, Black Salt Audio. Under the hood, there's a lot of wizardry going on, combining things like compression and tape saturation, stereo enhancing, EQ, and probably a bunch of other things that I don't even really understand how they work to produce the outcome of, as our slogan states, silky smooth top end without the harshness. It's a plugin that would be very difficult, not impossible, to replicate using separate plugins and I'm forever thankful to be able to have tools like this at my disposal. But it's not magically gonna make a mix the best that it can be without having to put in any work. It's very easy to misuse a plugin like this and very quickly destroy a mix. So at the end of the day, while I still personally believe that relying on things like real-time analyzers and DQ matching can sometimes do more harm than good, they can still be really helpful and critical tools when it comes to problem solving and such. It's something that you and I really shouldn't be taking too seriously. Do whatever it takes and whatever works for you to get the best possible outcome. What's your take on mixing with your eyes? Do you think it's a real thing or am I just spitting out a bunch of hoo-ha? Don't forget that you can get 25% off BSA Clipper by using the link in the description. You'll snag a great deal and you'll be signed up for our mailing list where you'll get emails about exclusive discount codes and flash sales. We have new videos here every week, so when I consider subscribing and leaving a like while you're at it. We talked a lot about second guessing your skills. 
Trust me, it happens to everyone. So why not check out this video on dealing with imposter syndrome? And if there are other topics that you'd like us to tackle in the future, be sure to comment down below and let us know what you'd like to see next. Until then, I've been Jerry. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya!